This month has been a really tough one for Mars One. With a venerable media storm following comments made by one of the final 100 Mars One candidates. Now I've since posted my own video response to the allegations made in many of these articles, but if you'd like to be brought up to speed on what's been done by some The Rochegate Saga, Chris Casper has posted an excellent review article over on his blog Small Steps to Space, which I feel quite adequately summarises the events. I'll post a link to that down below. A lot of this criticism boils down to a lack of communication between Mars One and the general public, which is part of the reason why I make these video updates. Now myself and the other candidates have been in constant communication with Mars One throughout this recent media backlash and since, and Mars One have agreed that the best way to prevent this from happening in future is by providing in-depth answers, clarity, and most importantly, transparency. I like to think that this recent criticism will prove immensely valuable to Mars One, as it has made them acutely aware of the main concerns and questions that people have about the project. As a good first step in moving towards transparency, Mars One CEO Baz Lansdorp recently posted a video addressing some questions about the mission's feasibility. In particular, I was very pleased to see him confirm the investment deal which I mentioned in last month's video, and he's since further elaborated in some articles that he expects the paperwork for this deal to be finished around two months from now. Whilst this would be in time in order to finance the follow-up studies that Lockheed Martin requires to meet the 2018 launch window for Mars One's first demonstration mission, a number of the payload teams that have been working on the payloads for this mission have expressed concern about being able to meet that time frame. So taking this into account, Mars One have made the tough call to delay Mars One's first unmanned mission by two years until 2020. Now, naturally it's disappointing that what effectively boils down to a small delay in paperwork have caused Mars One to miss a launch window, but the take-home message that I want to convey is that the funding for the mission is finally moving into place. This upcoming financial investment is the key to moving Mars One forward, and so I'm very pleased and very excited to see that it's finally nearing completion. And a number of you have asked me about whether this delay is projected to affect the astronaut selection and the astronaut training, and the short answer is no, that's still moving ahead with the previous timeline, and it's expected that the third round will really kick into motion just after the summer of this year. So what's been going on on the technical side? Well, whilst most of Mars One's payload providers for the initial demonstration lander haven't been made public yet, I thought I'd show you a little sneak preview about one of the proposed experiments, in particular the water extraction experiment. So one of the teams interested in providing the payload for this experiment are taking the fascinating approach of using microwave energy to effectively bake water out of the Martian's top layer soil. So this team consists of a NASA researcher who co-invented the process, along with a collection of robotics experts from the University of Central Florida, amongst other engineers. I'm going to post a link down below to a document elaborating on the technical details behind this fascinating proposal, and I'm looking forward to in the near future being able to go into much greater depth about the selector payloads and the science behind them. Now, I had been hoping in this update to be able to review the Paragon Aerospace report outlining how Mars One's environmental control and life support system will work, but it seems that unfortunately it's been delayed due to factors beyond Mars One's control. I've followed up with Mars One about it, of course, and it seems that they're currently projecting around the end of April or so to release it. Nevertheless, this report will be the first serious attempt to outline the science and the technical details behind how parts of Mars One's mission will work. So to tell you what, once the report is released, I'm going to make a dedicated video exploring the science behind it and the technical details. I'll of course keep you updated once I have more news about this, but in the meantime, hold tight because the wait is nearly over. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, I produce Mars One mission updates at the end of each month, bringing you the latest news on the project. At the end of last month's video, I asked a riddle. I'd like to congratulate Above Average Geek and Togwak1 for correctly guessing Isidus Planitia, the region of Mars where the UK's Beagle 2 landed back in 2003. This week's featured video is a time lapse showing the climatic evolution of Mars put together by NASA. Next up, I'll be resuming the Phobocam series, following my own research efforts in developing a thermal infrared camera for a sample return mission to Mars' moon Phobos. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it, and to stay up to date with the latest developments on the Mars One mission.